Welcome to part number 44 of Gran Turismo 5 A-Spec. This is the movie Chicane, and today we're doing the European Hot Hatch Championship. So the only car that I haven't used, slash could be sorta kinda eligible, is... This thing? The Lupo? But I don't really want to use it because... Yeah, I already used the fucking Lupo in this game, and I don't want to use that Lupo. Is my driver doing a squat? Yeah, it's like his, uh, you know, early 2000s boy band's, uh, boy band stance. That's my profile pick. Anyways, so I'm in the dealership, let's go ahead and find something. Why couldn't this car appear more often? Fiat 500? Okay, yeah, I can use this for, for Azure and Orwand. Yeah, 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 we can use this for Azure. Why not? So I should mention one thing to you guys right now, um, I actually am not going to use any of the repeat cars, so whatever I use in GT5, I will not use in GT6, because the games are very similar in my opinion, and then also the car list is virtually identical, apart from like, five cars that are missing from GT5 and GT6. So whatever I use in this game, I will not be using in GT6. So for example, this Fiat 500, 08. I'll use the Abarth, but I won't use the, um, the base model 500. Damn, it took the game that long to load. Alright, well, whatever. Anyways, on to the first round of the European Hot Hatch Championship. At Iger Norwand. Okay, fine, we're buying a fucking turbo. I nearly did this without upgrades, but seeing as how the AI took me out. Uh, I need more power, I guess. Thank you, Mini Cooper. Oh yeah, I'm reported. Totally reported, oh yeah. I'm like Sam Bird, just hit him from behind. By the way, this is my fifth attempt at this race. Half a million Polish packs in Australia this Sunday. I hope he does well, man. I I certainly hope that Kubica does well. I don't think he will. Not because of a lack of ability or anything, just because the Williams is, is dog shit. And I, I guess to a... Not necessarily a lack of ability, which I'm going to say right now, but... Just being out of the seat for so long is going to hinder him for sure. But... I do hope he does well. I grew up as a Kubica fan. Remember watching him win Canada 08? When I was uh, 13, I think? 13, yes. Oh look, instead of going like 60 miles an hour, now we're going 70. Which is what we needed, I guess. What if they were sandbagging all this time? Imagine, imagine if Williams comes out as the top car. <laughs> Carly stuffing my mouth hole. Mm, sounds like fun. It sounds. Never mind. I don't know how old you are, so I don't want to go to jail. Um, and thank you for the compliments of my Fittichini mobile. Isn't she cute? Even she agrees. <laughs> Kangaroo without a face. Wait, is his hand still bad, Mazorski? Oh, you're making a joke. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I'm fucking stupid. You're not supposed to agree with me, Fiat. It's okay. It's okay. You're five years old? Oh, fuck. Chris Hansen's gonna come to my house and tell me to take a seat.
He said, what were you doing here? Oh, I just came here for cookies and, you know, and lemonade. And just to hang out. It's about 70% recovered. Ah, uh, okay, I see. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, like, look at Robert Wickens' recovery the same way as Robert Kavitsa's, where it's like, I think he's going to be able to walk again, but he's probably not going to be able to walk, like, like he did before. He might need some assistance, or he might, like, he might walk with a limp or something, but who knows? Still got a long road ahead for him, and then also, because, like, uh, like Kubitz's accident, I mean, dude, didn't he nearly get his head, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't, what, didn't he get his hand, like, pierced? So imagine all of his, like, I, I don't know. I, I have no idea, like, what exactly happened to Robert's hand. Either it got pierced or it got squished or something. Yeah, man. I mean, it's just it's just in their blood, dude. Racing drivers are just set up to be that way. They have a couple of loose screws in their head, man. It was almost severed, yeah. But did, did he get, like, did his hand get squished or did, like, something go through it? Kind of like, like a piece of guardrail or something, because I don't know. Kubitz's accident is not really something that I follow too heavily. I know what car we can buy. This thing! Audi A3 is a used car that belongs in the UCD. It's a standard car, I mean. Um, silver. That looks really good in silver. Yeah, Zanardi's recovery and Billy Mongers is probably one of the best. I mean, Jesus Christ, guys, they had their they had their legs severed. Well, Zanardi's legs were severed. I think. I think Billy's were just, um, I don't know about Billy's, like, weren't they just, like, so, like, did, okay, he hit the front, of, he hit the rear of that car at Donington, right? So, like, I'm guessing that he hit it so hard that the chassis of the car actually, like, did they, like, squish his legs or something? Like, I, I don't quite understand. Like, they injured, they, they, they pretty much just, like squish them that hard or something i i have no clue and i'm not trying to sound funny or anything but i legit don't know they crushed his legs okay got it because zanardi obviously tagliani's car sliced through zanardi's legs like like you know like a knife on on like a warm knife on butter but okay they, yeah so they crushed his legs dude that's that's fucking terrible So let's do this. Oh, Zanardi and Milan? Yeah. Um, honestly, like, that was really emotional for me too, but I think more than anything, what was pretty emotional for me and my dad was, um, When he completed the last 13 laps at Lausitz Ring, you know, right before the race started in 2003, like with hand with the hand controls and whatnot, he completed the last 13 laps around that track, and the series had painted him, you know, his livery. They painted his um, Mo Nun racing livery on like the the modern at the time modern champ car, because the cars were different. The O3 model was much different than the O1. Okay, so yeah, this car industry is like crazy. I'm forgetting that I'm not driving a car with racing soft tires.
Yeah, man, it was. I'm just hoping that, that Robbie recovers, man. Like, at least enough, so that way, you know, he's gonna reach no matter what. As he said before. So, like, I don't know if you guys saw, but he did an interview with NBC Sports before the IndyCar Series uh, season opener kicked off. And, yeah, the interview is, like, available online and whatnot. And you can find it on YouTube. I think on NBC's YouTube channel, their motorsports channel. But, um, he was basically saying that his goal is to get back into a car by 2020. And even if he, you know, even if he can't walk, he's going to use hand controls. Because he said if Zanardi and Billy Monger can do it, I can too. Which is, you know, awesome for him to say that and believe that. But more than anything, I don't necessarily care about the fact that, you know, he's going to be back in the car or not. More than anything, I want him to live, in, uh, at, you know, as much of a normal life as possible. That's really what I want to see. Yeah, this covers this, uh, this cover. This car suffers on the straightaways quite a bit. Not as bad as the Fiat, but the other cars either have a better tires or b these are all upgraded cars. Nice outside pass for the lead. And now we got one more lap to go. Or the drivers are here again. <laughs> oh, sorry, sir. So yeah, I gotta do some very, really vigorous defending with Mini here. Oh shit, look at them both come, the 207 and the Mini. And we gained a little bit of time because they kind of went side by side together through the right-hander. And just enough to win. Yay. Imagine he had overtaken me right before the, the start-finish line. That would have been insane. But I had a feeling we had enough. Okay, well, let's save that replay real quick. The balls on this American, I know, right? Only because we, you know, we're the greatest country in the world, Ender. And you don't believe that? You can get out of here. Alright, so we go from winning a Focus Rally car to winning yet another VW Lupo, a GTI Cup car 03. Now, I specifically not, you know, I specifically didn't use this car in uh, the Lupo Cup because I thought using the GTI base model would have been harder, but it turned out not to be. It turned out to be really freaking easy. Yeah, that was the MX-5 race. I remember that. That was pretty good. Oh, yeah, damn it. You're totally right about that, Ender. Fuck. One of the states is the state that Rishi lives in. Oh, damn it. 
Yeah, you're right. I take back whatever I said. All right, anyway, so next time on Gran Turismo 5 A-Spec, we do the Italian Festival. Oh, <laughs>